Thunder Dome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, uh, <clears throat> just trying to touch on a couple of the bigger topics real quick, you know, get a few videos out, like I'm saying, um, so I can get my opinion and then start from there. But anyway, the Floyd McGregor thing, right? Seems, uh, I think it's pretty big. They're talking like it's fucking serious. Uh, Freddie Roach said that Floyd said it's going to happen. Um, you know, he's making up fucking flyers and posters. Uh, and he can do it, maybe do an ad or something. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Like, is this really fucking happening? I mean, one of the, one of the best pros, <clears throat> one of the best professional boxers on the planet, right? A seasoned vet, seasoned vet, T just a top level fighter, a top level boxer versus a fucking nobody in the sport, right? And when I say nobody, you know, it's because he's done shit in boxing. So he, he is a nobody to boxing. I don't care what boxing he learned for the UFC. It don't fucking apply. All right? It's like, no. Dude, that's why, you know, and it would be his fucking pro debut, right? You have... One of the pound for pound top guys versus a guy in his fucking pro debut. And it does not matter if he's fought in other things or not. He might as well just be a fucking a gym rat. Right? It's still his pro debut. MMA has nothing to do with boxing. Nothing. Like it's a totally, totally different game. And it's it's, it's his pro debut? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Ah. Uh, Van Heerden, fucking Van Heerden. Uh, Freddie Roach also said Van Heerden fucking gave it to him. And that's the thing, like, all right, first of all, Connor in a boxing ring, Connor McGregor in a boxing ring um, is like Floyd in the cage, you know, UFC cage, uh, MMA cage, or whatever. Like, Floyd will dominate in that ring just like McGregor would dominate in the cage. Because they're totally fucking different. Uh, disciplines, you know, like to the Conor McGregor fans, he cannot win, it's, it's, he can't win, and he will not win, it's impossible, you know, he, a lucky punch, dude, professional fighters have tried for that lucky punch, right, they couldn't get it, you are not gonna get it, that's a fucking fact, Berto had a 75% higher chance to get a knockout than, than, McGregor did, and you, you saw what Berto was able to do, you know, it's about a signal, um, it's, it's just ridiculous, I mean, Roach, uh, said it would take him, like, what, three to five years to fucking train corner, and that never means he's gonna be able to fucking compete, that don't mean shit, because literally, you're gonna have to put this dude, register him as a fucking amateur, and, uh, put him through, like, a year or just fighting every fucking week, as often as you can, put it that way. Um, practice and on shit, don't, don't even worry about the wins and losses. Well, worry about them, but not too much, because it's more about experience and learning how to box, like for real, not fucking MMA hands up. Um, totally different. The stand-up in MMA is not boxing. It's not, it's like totally different. Um, even with the guys who punch a lot, like the the... The moves and everything are just still different. Um, and he's not... He can't do it, man. He just can't do it. Um, Van Heerden gave it to him. Van Heerden's a fucking journeyman, right? A journeyman. Um, and a pre he was a protected journeyman, too. But, look. Get him a year of amateur experience, I guess. And then put him in verse some... Some tomato cans, uh, turn them pro for some tomato cans. Just let them beat up on them, uh, practicing shit along the way. But then you're gonna have to take that step up, like even to low, like to mid level journeyman, low to mid level journeyman. <sighs> even if he has to beat, you know, four or five of them just to get his record to fight, I don't know. That's the point. The fight ain't ever gonna take years down, take place years down the road anyway. So it's like, we know what it would take to see if he could even compete. Um, 
Turn his ass pro. Put him in a ring with a mid-level guy. Put him in with fucking Soto Cross. Let's see if he can beat Soto Cross. You know, something like that. Um, fuck, you know. Put him in with a ton of people. Uh, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless. Put him in with Lamont Peterson. Lamont Peterson would school him. School him. And that's the problem. <laughs> if he, like, even did fight some tomato cans, then moved up to, like, mid low mid-level journeyman, one of those guys very likely would scold his ass. They'd be coming to win, and they, you know, maybe they're dedicated their life to boxing. They're a gym rat, and they're a professional fighter. Uh, they come to win. Uh, you know, their, their level just isn't high enough to get above that level, but that level, a guy on his game at that level might be able to just outbox him. Just off pure technique, but hitting and not getting hit. Not getting hit. So, you, you know what I mean? It's What is beating McGregor? I mean, anybody might be able to. Van Heerden would beat McGregor in a boxing match. Yes, he 100% fucking would. Um, he would. You know, what's McGregor going to do? I mean, it's he can go loud. That ain't going to work. It might get him fucking knocked out. Um. He can try to box, and that ain't going to work. He's just going to get out boxed. So it's like whatever he does, he, he don't have a fucking hope, right, against a mid-level guy. Now what's he going to do with one of the best? I mean, size or something? Put him in with Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao school the shit out of him. You know, so Floyd would just be doing what he is supposed to do, and he better make this dude look, like, horrible. Just fucking fuck around with him and clown him the whole time, you know, um, making him whiff, and then ducking under it, getting up laughing at him and shit, talking shit, just keep fucking with him, making him fucking whiff, because uh, that's all he's going to be doing, whiffing all night long, so, might as well get some entertainment out of it, uh, but don't, I ain't, I'd never fucking buy that fight, because I already know what it's going to do, it's just a fucking money grab, honestly, um, dude, like, could McGregor even come into boxing and win a title? Just a title in any division? No. I, I don't think he could. I don't. I don't, man. I mean, it's a fucking money grab. You know, it's a F you to all, to all the fans. Um, you know, to go 50, you know, and, you know, and I know it's like a heavyweight record. And it don't really apply, but people do apply it. And that they always he's trying to break more C on his record. Well, he's not a heavyweight, but I get it. Um, I get it still, you know. Uh, you know, 40, all right, you tie it with 49 and 0, which was the joke fight. And then for 50 and 0, to break it, you're going for possibly the biggest joke fight. It's like WWE shit, um, it's just a money grab. Connor's going to come in and would thank you to lose because he's never going to get so much money in his life. And he's going to thank you to high heaven. He'll gladly lose to Floyd Mayweather um, just because he's going to be set for life. So, of course he would. He'd fucking, yeah, whatever. That's what happens to a lot of, lot of Floyd opponents. They're just like, damn, man, this guy just set me up for life. I can't really, it's hard to, you know, fight the guy. Try to render him unconscious when he just set your whole family up. Um, when he could have picked anybody, but he picked your weak ass, and now you're all happy and you get a bunch of money. Uh, but Connor, you know, it's. You know, to go 50 and 0 with like Berto and then Connor, um, which again, like I said, it's one of the best first of doing this fucking pro debut. Who showed no signs he can fucking box at all. Already been put into gyms and been spanked by fucking low level fucking mid low mid level journeyman. Uh, come on, man. You know, no one wants to see that fight at all. You know, put him in there with like fucking Danny Garcia. That would be fun. We get to watch Danny knock him the fuck out. Uh, that'd be about it. Because even he couldn't beat Danny Garcia. Never. Danny would outbox him. Even coming forward, it wouldn't matter. Um, you know, but going for that 49 and then 50 and 0 with that, it really, 
against fucking no hopers, 49 and 50. If he fights Connor and beat him, what you would, they'd be total both no fucking hopers. So it's like, what are you fuck? What are you doing? How's this really fucking with the, his Rockies record? You know, it's. I mean, but it, what it does is it fucking actually not really an asterisk uh, by the record. There's an asterisk by the fucking record, in my opinion, but it taints it too, man. And it shines a light on a lot of the bullshit he pulled through his fucking career. It's like whatever he could get away with is what he did. Um, now he realized, hey, I might be able to go this far. This far. Right? This fight should never get sanctioned. They didn't even, Nevada is where it's going to take place. They didn't want to, they didn't sanction uh, Ward versus who, whoever um, that was. Uh, Murdoch, Ward and Murdoch. They said no too too big of a talent gap okay well, what what the fuck about floyd mcgregor how are they going to defend that one you know what you you turn down a professional fighter versus another professional fighter and then you turn down possibly the best and then you grant possibly the best versus possibly the worst All right cuz let's face it he's could be the fucking funniest thing in the world in boxing he could be trash and i'm sure he is trash you know, give them some years, maybe. You know, but that's always just a maybe. I don't care how disciplined he is. That don't mean he can learn how to box. You know, it's that simple. I mean, Roach seen him, worked with him, said fuck three to five years. It's like that ain't even enough because that still only means it's a maybe. He still might get beat by Van Heerden. You know, like, it's that fucking simple. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know, 48 and 0, and then like 49 and 0 in like 20 years, and 50 and 0, whatever, you know. And the 49 and 50 were horrible. A couple good fights in there. I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not what Rocky's record like really was, man. Um, he wasn't picking... Bums. He was picking literally like the most deserving guys, the guys everyone wanted him to fight. Um, it, early on in his career, he was getting a lot of guys put in there with him, but his like last like 15, 16, 17 fights, no, nah, no, nah, he was just fighting who he had to fight on his way up. And once he got there, he was giving the best guys uh, shots at. Uh, that's not what Floyd's doing, man. You know, it, it, he's not. You know. And Floyd's going to hit 50-0 and 0 in like 21 years or whatever. Fucking Rocky at 49-0 and 0 in eight years. He's only a fucking pro for eight years, you know? And, I mean, that's a big fucking thing. You know, people are like, well, yeah, for 50-0 and, 0 and you know, blah, 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 20 years and didn't give the most deserving guy a, a, a shot basically at every single fight. Uh, no didn't. Um, that's exactly what he didn't do. And that's exactly what fucking Rocky Marciano did. I mean, actually, you know, kind of remember his record. Uh, Rocky Marciano's run. Remind me to get back to Marciano's run. If anyone ever read these fucking Books. Let me know which one's the best. That's the one I'm gonna fucking read first. Uh, Archie Moore, the, the Ageless Warrior, uh, and about Tiger Flowers, uh, Tiger Rose out of Georgia. Let me know which one's the better one to start with. I heard this one has a bunch of details about his uh, death, things like that. Um, I think this Archie one might be good. I re read through a little bit of it. But let me know which one that you think is the best. <laughs> Hopefully one of y'all have read it, right? Uh, what the hell was it? What the hell was it? Oh. No. What's it? Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, what Marciano's record stood for is, like, giving the best their opportunities, you know? Even before Rocky was champ, he was beating dudes, like... Rolling the stars up, first of all, uh, when he was fucking undefeated. Um, uh, Rex Lane, um, obviously Joe Lewis, uh, you know, Bernie Reynolds, uh, 
Uh, Lisa Vold. Lisa Vold first. That's right. Lisa Vold. Who, that, that dude fought everybody. He was a beast. I mean, all these dudes were beasts. They were the best. And, like, the, the, they, the, a lot of those guys stayed the best. Not, uh, Lewis, obviously, but Lisa Vold was always a top contender. Uh, Lane, always a top contender. Uh, Roland Lestarza, always a top contender. Bernie Reynolds, tough son of a bitch, always up there. Uh, but Lisa Vold, dude had like fucking 150, 60 fights or some shit. Uh, yeah, you know, crazy. I mean, he's fighting great fighters. Maybe not top 100, but some, some of them. I mean, well, a lot of them are top 100, uh, like Joe Lewis, obviously, but not D. Joe. That's not D. Joe Lewis. He fought, obviously, so that don't count. But um, you know, in the top 200, I mean, everyone he fought is really in the top 150, honestly. Man, maybe top 200, but a lot, a lot of his guys are in the top 25. You know, like Archie Moore and Ezra Charles and Walcott, uh, things like that. You know, and he had his, um, fought, uh, the, oh my god, what was his name? The kid, the, uh, Harry, Harry, the, Harry the Kid Matthews, you know, and that dude's record, I can't remember, but it was like fucking 90 and 1 or something like that, it was, you know, I'll have to go check it out, uh, it was amazing, amazing, the dude was just fucking whooping ass, and he was gonna get a shot at Archie Moore, so it was like, him and Rocky were going to fight. Um, Rocky was obviously undefeated, but this was the title. You know, whoever won this fight got to fight um, uh, Jersey Joe Walcott, right? Uh, so, dude, and Harry Matthews, fuck, I'm thinking about Harry Matthews. He, uh, he was, dude, he beat, like, some of the best fighters, like, ever. Lloyd Marshall. Do it from the Black Murder Show. We fought him as a light heavyweight, at light heavyweight. Knocked him out in the first round. That dude's, he's one of the greatest fighters, man. Um, that dude just fought everyone, you know. But it was a huge, huge fight back then, too, since the winner um, got Walker. Uh, I think 30 some thousand people at Yankee Stadium. Um, Rocky was an 11 to 5 favorite. So that's not a big. Yes. People were thinking he, he's gonna win. That's obvious, but it's not guaranteed. You know, it's like nowhere near it. Cause this dude's a beast, man. Uh, he really was. Uh, yeah, no, he got fucking KO'd though. I uh, can't remember what round. I can't remember what round. Yeah, no, what the fuck round did he get knocked out? I can't remember. Anyway. Jersey, so he fights fucking Jersey Joe Walcott. Hey, he only, you know, well, I, I get it. Marciano's record ain't all that. I'm not saying it is, like, it's for, um, I think it's a, it's an all-time resume, but it's not all that either. Um, and I'll get to why I think it's a top resume, but not super high. Um, but he could only fight who was in his generation who were in the rankings with him, who were the guys he was around at the time. You know, that's all he could do. Um, and that's what he did. You know, fought the best of them. You know, he fights Walcott. Um, uh, you know, after Walcott just fucking won the title from uh, Ezra Charles, Walcott, Walcott just had um, three fights uh, you know, for him in a row with uh, Ezra Charles. Uh, he lost the first one. Won the second and third, so he kept his belts. Uh, but Ezra had been champ. You know, he's really been champ. Uh, he, he wasn't exactly recognized by everybody until Joe Lewis, but he was champ. Everyone knew it because uh, when Joe Lewis retired, the only reason they, they wanted it lineage, you know, he had to go beat uh, Joe Lewis to, to get that lineage. But when Joe retired, he picked the, the best two heavyweights, the guys who he thought deserved the, the shot at the heavyweight championship. And he picked Ezra Charles and Jerry Joe Walcott. And they fought for the title. Um, Ezra Charles won. You know, and beat the shit out of a ton of great fighters <laughs> on his run. 
uh, it, those dudes were two of the baddest dudes out there at that time. You know, period, period. Um, also, like Archie Moore, and Lloyd Marshall, uh, a lot of guys, man. But um, Ezra Charles, man, it, it, Walcott just fought Ezra, but in, in between um, the Walcott fight, fights, Ezra would always keep a fight. You know? He'd fight back to back so fast, but he fought Joey Maxim two times and Rex Lane. Uh, once in the um, in between the second and uh, I mean after the first in between the first and second in between the second and third uh, beating top level dudes then getting his shot again you know uh, well he gave the, the first one but then there was a rematch you know it is what it is but <clears throat> Ezra Charles man that dude is I don't care if he was old or not right when when Rocky fought him. The guy was beating great fighters at that moment. Um, you know, this guy is probably one of the most slept on all time greats. He's one of my favorite fighters of all time. Uh, because, you know, it sucks there's not much footage on him, but I just love, you know, the, the shit that he did. It, you know, dude, honestly, like, go learn about Ezra at anything you can. Um, show you how badass this dude is. They wouldn't let, they wouldn't put someone in the ring with Ezra unless they were good, good, or else you're getting fucked up, right, period, like, bad, so everyone he fought always knew how to fight, he never got, like, those scrubs, go look at his resume, it's just filled with who's who after who's who constantly, it's ridiculous, I mean, like, you know, guys, I mean, it's too, oh my god, obviously, Archie Moore, and uh, Charlie Burley, Lloyd Marshall, and fucking, Satterfield, Bob Satterfield, uh, Walcott, uh, two Jimmy Bivens, um, and uh, oh, Oakland Billy Smith, like Teddy Yaros, Joe Joey Max, who he owned all the time, and Joe, Joe Lewis. I mean, he and just uh, oh, dude, it's uh, uh, sixty other crazy fucking top two hundred greats, you know. Um, fight after fight after fight after fight. It's ridiculous. Dude, dude beat Burley twice. At middleweight, beat Burley twice. This one, they were both coming up. Um, they were both, you know, well, Burley obviously came up welterweight and then went into middleweight, but he was still on the come up because he jumped pretty fast because uh, he was just fighting anybody. So he went up there, and him and Ezra were like the two most talked about dudes. They fought twice uh, here in Pittsburgh. Ezra beat them both times. Burley never beat Ezra Charles crazy. They had like fights in the year uh, type shit, uh, but he couldn't win. Uh, Joey Maxim. Joey Maxim never beat um, <laughs> never beat Ezra Charles. This is a natural middleweight. This is a natural late heavyweight. Uh, obviously, he moved up from you know, middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight. And only got his only title he ever had was heavyweight. He was possibly and probably the best middleweight in the world. Um, possibly, you know, the best light heavyweight in the world. Um, possibly the best heavyweight if he would have packed, you know, packed it on and stayed there or something or went there sooner. But he was old, so uh, in his prime, though, guy was ridiculous. You know, that's a, f a couple guys I wish fought him and never did. You know, you know who. Um, but Joey Maxim never beat him once. On uh, fucking Charles beat him five times. I think five. I think five times. Um, he beat Archie Moore three times. Never lost to Archie Moore. Fought Archie Moore three times. Never lost. Uh, yeah, I know it's the love. Um, oh, oh. Uh, Jimmy Bivens, another black murderer's row, and Lloyd Marshall. They beat him back to back, and he never lost to them again. He rematched. Um, Lloyd twice after that, beating him both times, and he rematched Bivens four times after that, beat him every time. <clears throat> the Black Murderers were guys, like, he, he would fight anybody, he fought everybody. Um, like, Burley would have died to get a shot at, like, uh, a Joey Maxim. It is what it is. Um, 
I don't know, man. That's Herbert's just, he's so underrated. I don't know. Like, the point is, right? Alright. Is an old Ezra Charles worse than an older, still beating top level guys back then? Is, you know, compare, like, comparison wise, is would you consider an aged Ezra Charles uh, worse than, say, that heavyweight, you'd have to do a pound for pound kind of thing, you know, worse than Ortiz, Guerrero, uh, Maidana, any worse for them fighting how well to wait? You pick them. I mean, come on. Even an older, uh, even an aged Ezra was one of the best fighters in the world. That's why he was able to beat some of the best fighters in the world around that time. At that time, period, you know, period. Uh, anyway, I mean, it's just, you know, back to Rocky, you know, I don't know. The, the, the level, like, even uh, when Rocky fought Walcott, what, where would you rank that Walcott in their first fight uh, or their second fight, even? Would you rank that version of that fighter above certain other guys? Like, probably not. Probably not, because uh, that's how good they still were. That's why they were, they were the top dogs, most just pretty much the most deserving fighters. Um, but he fought Walcott, beat him, and gave Walcott a rematch, uh, like you're supposed to do um, if you beat the, the you know the champ and beat him again, obviously. Um, and he fought. La Starza again gave La Starza his uh, another shot. Um, fought Ezra, Ezra Charles twice, twice. That's right. Um, um, then Don Cockle and Don Cockle and Archie Moore. That's right. Before Archie Moore was Don Cockle, so he fought La Starza Ezra Ezra Charles twice. Um, Don Cockle and Archie Moore. Probably all the most deserving guys at, at that time. Uh, and out of Rocky's last 14 fights, I think it's 14 fights, only one person ever went the distance with him. And it was Ezra Charles in their first fight. Um, he's the only guy, you know, from that run, you know, when he was coming up that ladder, his last 14, take him on the best opponents out there um, at that time. The only guy to go the distance was Ezra Charles. Shows you how fucking good he is. Um, honestly. I uh, got knocked out in the next fight, though. That's the fight where Marciano's nose got ripped. Uh, like, worse than Vitaly's eye, man. Just ripped, opened up, like, split in twos, man. And he asked the ref for one more round. And the ref said, you can draw one, one more round. He went out and knocked Ezra out in that round. They were going to stop the fight. You know, he said, just one round, please. They gave it to him. He stopped. And he had to stop him or else he was going to lose. So it was pretty, pretty crazy. Um, shows you what he can do when he really knows he has to. Um, you know, it's just... But the point is, though... Man, if you want to break a historical record, right? Like a historical record. I know it's heavyweight record. Right? I, I, I get that, but people still link it to you know. While he's trying to go the longest undefeated out of anybody, right? Um, you know, it's like whatever, whatever, you know. Um, but that that fifty and zero. If he does do, if I'm saying if he fights McGregor or just someone along that caliber, you know, um, for 50 and 0, it doesn't mean shit, you know. It don't. It doesn't apply to the to, to box, especially a McGregor fight. That's just like, this, the, it should be an exhibition. Like, they shouldn't even sanction the shit as a real boxing match because it's a top level guy versus a pro debuter. So I'm sorry, he ain't fucking Lomachenko. All right, uh, McGregor, he is not Lomachenko, so don't even try it. You know, it's, it's silly. 
at least make them beat a fucking, hey, you want a title shot? Go beat a, or not a title shot even, but a shot at a top guy. Go fight a mid-level guy. Go fight Lamont Peterson. Can you even beat him? Or Danny Garcia. Can you even beat him? Flat out. Give him the Spence. Give him the fucking Spence. That'd be great. I didn't even think of that. That'd fucking be tremendous for him. Wouldn't bring as much money. I get that. Um, so, eh, maybe, I don't know. That'd be great if Spence could get it, though. Uh, it would help his career like a motherfucker. Because he would kill. He'd fuck kill Conor McGregor. That's why, like, if any of you want to see Conor come beat Floyd, it's like, you don't think it's happening. Because it is not. Trust, like, just trust and believe. You know, this guy is protected in Vegas. He don't lose. You can't beat him. <laughs> you gotta land a lucky punch. Um, and sometimes some guys ain't even trying and shit, it seems. So, uh, you know, it's just... They don't, like, try to just... It's like, kill him, get them. I'm losing, I gotta go for it. They, you know, those content to lose a decision. And that's what he'll be. But I, I want for Floyd... If it does happen, Floyd needs to embarrass the shit out of him. Like, just really embarrass him. Smack hard as hell and clown him, tell him, come get me, make him whiff, crack him again. This is a good dude, ain't gonna have a chance. <laughs> he won't put, the point is, about breaking a historical record and shit like that, you know, every fight he had was like just tough, 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 tough. Might not have been the toughest, like Prime Hazard or Prime Walcott or something like that, but, you know, it's still. Those guys at that moment were still better, I think, anyway, power for power wise than, you know, Floyd's. Uh, so it's like, when you run that that last uh, you know, what, six fight stretch, seven fight stretch, maybe even eight, uh, some tough sons of bitches. Um, I don't know, I'm just trying to beat a record that the guy who kept winning, he was fighting guys that were supposed to beat him each time, you know, uh, the guys that people thought had the best chance, anyway, um, that's not what Floyd's doing, Floyd's not giving the most deserving fighter the fight, which is what he should do, um, so everyone does, but he's not, he's literally giving the least deserving guy the fight, um, and instead of guys who put their whole life into it, and the guys he said don't get any shine, right? I thought fucking, you know, oh, none of Spence don't get no shine. Thurman don't get no shine. You know, none of these guys get shine. Well, give them some shine, Floyd. Fight one of them. Fight fucking Laura. Fight Andrade. Fight Thurman. Uh, fight the Thurman Porter winner. Um, shit, you know, fight Brooke. Fight Spence. How about that? Since Spence gets no attention, fight him. Give him his fucking attention. You know, let them fucking cream you. Uh, see what happens. Uh, fuck, fight, GGG. It's not that big of a deal that people make it out as. It's fucking crazy. Um, you know, but that's what Floyd does. Right? I mean, Floyd is the guy that just doesn't challenge himself, so he's not going to fight a young gun like a, a Thurman Porter winner, a, a Brook. It ain't happening. Andrade, Alara, it's not happening. Those are the styles that can beat him, and he knows it. He has to pick slow, plotters, attackers, one-dimensional fighters. That's it. You know, if you got a multi-dimensional guy, it's not happening. Um, especially a highly skilled one. Not as highly skilled as him, but they're they're younger, um, hungrier. If one actually shows him no respect, like if Brooke goes in there, Thurman goes in there just wanting to take his fucking head off, but doing it, you know, technically like chopping him down um, scientifically, not just winging wild shots, like, but you're really trying to break him down to get him out of there and staying on him at all times. Um, and cracking with that good one, who knows? But you got to show them no respect. These guys go in there and show them way too much respect, and then they just lose the 12-round decision, you know? Um, but that's what he always does. He really never challenges himself, man. So, you know, 20, 20 years from now, 25 years from now, people looking back at this era and shit like that, 
you know, Floyd's whatever, 52, wherever he goes, um, he's 50 or 50 whatever, probably ain't gonna look good. He's probably gonna take nothing but sucker ass fights, not real ones, from here on out. You know, just money grabs. People are gonna be stupid enough to fucking give it to him. Uh, you're out of your mind, man. You're out of your mind. If you want, <laughs> Why don't you just send Floyd checks? Send him your money, man. Uh, you don't even get TMT gear back. You probably got enough of it. Just fucking send him your money and say, here, keep taking off of me. I don't care what kind of stupid shit you do. You can have everything. Fucking crazy. Um, I don't know, man. I think the fight's a fucking joke. If it goes through, uh, it shouldn't be sanctioned. It's a fucking top level guy versus a pro debut, or it just can't happen. It's ridiculous. You know, and like I said, how's the commission going to explain Ward Murdoch and, and uh, oh yeah, Floyd first a pro debuter. Makes a lot of sense, Don, huh? But, you know, with Floyd, Dana White, the WBC, uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, USADA, you know, oh shit, that's funny how Butte passes USADA but gets caught by the fucking state commission, right? How did USADA miss it? And then the, the fucking state commission got it. Right? Ain't that what happened? I'm pretty sure it's what happened, right? Um, the state commission is the easiest one to pass. So, that's the simplest one to beat. It's like, you like you saw they had to have caught him. <laughs> On their app post fight test, they had to have caught him. Also, um, no, he slid through there. Right, and then the state commission popped him. Seems he, I don't know. That's stupid shit, but anyway, that's funny. You know, USADA, they're all connected. They're all good boys, good old boys. They'll take care of the situation. They'll put the fight on, you know. But someone got to kick up fucking like 150 million for that fight. That fight ain't making 150 million. You're crazy. Like, it's not. It just ain't. Um, I don't care about the UFC fans. We know what their pay-per-views do. And we know what Floyd's do. And you, even if you put them together, it ain't even going to hit two million. You know? It'd be lucky to hit two million. I mean, 150 million, they're going to lose the, lose their ass on that. I don't know. I, it sounds like it's fucking happening. That's the only reason I'm talking about it. But let me know what you think, man. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Thank you.